In today's presentation, you're going to learn more about Margaret Burke White, a United States photographer who was born in 1904 and passed away in 1971. A famous quote from Miss Margaret Burke White. We are in a privileged and sometimes happy position. We see a great deal of the world. Our obligation is to pass it on to others. This is a great quote because it really sums up what Miss Burke White was doing with her style of social documentarianism with a camera. So who was Margaret Burke White? Well, a little bit about her. She was born in New York City in 1904. Her father was an engineer slash designer. He's the one that introduced Miss Burke White to photography originally when she was at a young age, but she didn't take in, she didn't really get into it. She originally went to school for herpetology, which is something in the medical field that you don't need to understand for the purpose of this lecture, but just understand that she was originally going to school for medicine. It wasn't until she fell in love with photography while studying at the Clarence H. White School of Photography while also going to school for medicine. That's when she fell in love with photography, really wanted to understand it more, really decided to become more in depth with it. She went on to photograph for the Farm Security Administration and major magazines such as Life and Fortune. She died in 1971 in Stanford, Connecticut. So what did she do in her career? <clears throat> well, first she started by going to the Clarence H. White School of Photography where she was in influenced by her mentor, Clarence H. White. Soon after she graduated, she opened up her own photography studio in Cleveland, Ohio. After she did that, she was commissioned by the Otis Steel Company in 1927 to take photos of their factory, their machines, and really emphasize the transition from the labor age of humans to the machine age also known as the mechanization age, or as you might know it, the industrial revolution. She was recruited by the Farm Security Administration, which was a group of people who were gathered together to show the social plights and gain, and gain resources in the hopes of helping some of these people in their plight, which you'll learn about later on. She also published Have You Seen Their Faces, which is her photography book for photography book in 1937. So here's some of the work she did for Life magazines. What's important to note here is that during this time period, Americans were starving for celebrity photos. They were starving for photos of war. They wanted to see photos that they had never seen before. So Margaret Burke White. When she was hired by life, these were some of the photos she was taking. She was mainly taking cover photos. So basically those, the cover of a magazine, you guys know to be big, vibrate, vibrate, vivacious. Sometimes they have an important meaning to them. That was her job. It definitely coincides well with her social documentarianism. This is probably one of my favorite photos that she took. And as you can see, it's called Summer Shower. And one of the important contexts of this photo is that young African, well, African Americans in general weren't allowed to swim with white people back in 1937. So one of the ways that African Americans would escape the heat is that they would go into the street and find one of these water source, one of, the, one of these places that had a water source that when you hacked it, messed with it, whatever you want to call it, all this water was spurred out. And many people could play in it. Think of it as a big Disney shower that you see when you go to Disneyland. This was because African Americans could not play in the pools that whites could. So they had to find other ways to keep cool in the summer. This is a photo, another photo that Miss Burke White took of a politician. Here's another one called War Stamp Bride. And here's Miss Burke White posing alongside Lee Eitingen, who was an edit reporter for Life magazine at the time. This photo is very iconic. What you're looking at is a bunch of dead people who were killed by the Nazi Germany 
I'm not sure exactly what their ethnicity is. And I don't want to say that they're Jewish because that's not been confirmed in the photo. But what we do know is that in Buchenwald, Germany, 1947, Miss Burke White was there to photograph the mass atrocity and mass display of dead, piled up bodies that was discarded by Nazi Germany. This was a definite highlight in her career and exposed the travesties that was going on in the world at the time. A fast fact, over about 10% of the world's population was decimated during World War II. Here, you can see some newly plowed land in Dust Bowl area. <laughs> Ironically, that's also the name of the, tit the title of the photo. The Dust Bowl in America was a big famine. Basically, farmers were having a tough time growing food. They couldn't sell food, which means a lot of people didn't have food. And it, 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 it made a lot of farmers poor. It made a lot of farmers have to go into debt. It just decimated their crops and everything. And Miss Burke White was there to take photos of the event and ordeal. This is one of them. Here, you have a lonely little baby, an African-American baby to be more specific, sitting by a caged bird. Why is this little baby sitting by a caged bird? It looks staged, you ask. Sort of. This baby was actually part of the Great Louisville Flood in 1937, which was a flood that displaced many people in the Louisville area, specifically African-Americans, who didn't have a lot of money or places to go after the flood decimated their homes. Here, you can see Ms. Burke White photographing a group of coal miners coming out of a mine near Carbondale, Pennsylvania. This is very significant because a lot of miners worked long, hard hours and got very sick because of their jobs. But their jobs was also very important to sustaining the U.S. economy, especially at a time where coal was used as a power source. Here, you can see Miss Burke White again at a shelter in Louisville, Kentucky after the flood in 1937. What's great about this photo is that you can definitely see how Miss Burke White took great care to make sure her subjects knew what was going on in the photo and not to exploit them. You may think, well, the girl in the bottom of the photo, she doesn't know what's going on, but it's okay because it looks like the people around her and her family does. And this young woman is not being exploited for any purposes other than to show the plights of African-Americans and how hard it was to survive after the flood. Here's another photo from the Dust Bowl in Colorado. And here's another, and here's a photo that Miss Burke White took of the Otis of in the Otis Steel Mill. As you can see, it definitely highlights the transition from human labor to indust the Industrial Revolution and mechanization of work. This is a photo that shows Buchenwald, Germany, and shows many captured people by Nazi Germany in these what was called concentration camps. These horrible camps where people were kept malnourished and just worked till they died or were killed by Nazis. Here we have a man who's looking at the remains of a home. Was well, two men actually looking at the remains of a home and trying to get whatever they can from it. This photo by Miss Burke White is probably the social documentary and icing on the cake. It has everything you would want. Great contrast, juxtaposition, and when you understand the context behind the photo, it makes it that much more clear that Miss Margaret Burke White was ahead of her time. As you can see, there's a line of African Americans who have been displaced in the greatest country in the world, as, is, as we've known to call it. But is it really the greatest country in the world when one group of people gets to enjoy the world's highest standard of living, as said in the advertisement behind them, and another group doesn't? So what's the significance of all these photos? Well, it contributed to the social documentary aesthetic of photography. And this was a big aesthetic that was gaining popularity around the time Ms. Burke White decided to get into photography. She was also the first person to work for Fortune as a staff photographer, man or woman. She was the only woman on the FSA, Farm Security Administration Photography team, and she has been, become an iconic photojournalist. Thank you for watching this presentation about Margaret Burke White.